Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. We can see. Okay. So let us start uh, today's lecture. So title is Tour de Force. Um, so uh, today we'll we are going to discuss a bit of a very interesting story. So it's it's like a story. So uh, you will be thrilled uh, to know uh, today's uh, uh, content. So uh, I will be mixing uh, a bit of. Uh, uh, history of evolution of religion. Uh, basically, uh, science and uh, religion sometimes they go together, and and the history is uh, very 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 interesting. Uh, just a moment, let me pick up the phone. Uh, just a moment. Hello. Uh, okay. So. Uh, so these are the books which I will be uh, referring to. Uh, you can see that uh, this book by Jacob Israel Israeli uh, Intermolecular and Surface Forces. I highly recommend this book. And uh, the next book which I recommend is basically uh, if you want to go deeper uh, into Wonderwall Forces, this is the book. But uh, this is a very interesting book. Uh, it tells you a lot, especially if you are a physical chemist or chemical engineer or physicists, this book you must read actually. Uh, it will uh, uh, help you a lot to get deeper understanding. Uh, uh, about forces, atomic force microscopy, uh, the focus book I would suggest uh, Eaton and West, which is from uh, Oxford University Press. Uh, quite a nice book. And uh, by S. Morita, uh, Roadmap of Sp Scanning Probe Microscopy. So when I say scanning probe microscopy, that all, that uh, take care of uh, other modes of AFM like uh, STM, and uh, this uh, book by Sarid is also very good. Many people who are working in uh, life sciences or biophysics, even chemical engineers, they work in biology, cell biology, virology, uh, you know, imaging of. Uh, uh, yeast, bacteria, mammalian cells, viruses. Uh, I would highly recommend uh, this book by Maurice Kirby, Kirby and Gunning by, from Imperial College Press. Uh, uh, this book is quite uh, nice, uh, but this is bo this book by Chun Li Bai. He's an, uh, he's an editor uh, of, uh, I think, uh, Nanotechnology, uh, some other journal. So STM, this book is focused on STM. Uh, again, this by Julian Chen is also focused on uh, uh, STM. Uh, yes, Bonin's book I really like. Uh, it is quite a nice book, Scanning Pro Microscopy and Spectroscopy. Uh, Foster and Hoffer's book is also, uh, these are all AFM books actually. Okay? Uh, they tell a lot about so these are basic books. These are not specialized books. So these are still basic books. I have not made uh, specialized books. So uh, there are still books on particular uh, uh, focus uh, subtopics of uh, force microscopy, but that becomes too specialized. So I've, I'm not going to do that unless there is a request. I can teach that. For example, there is a book on uh, uh, piezo response force microscopy. There is a book on scanning thermal microscopy, electrical, electro, electrochemical microscopy. And uh, these days, uh, uh, in addition to measuring the forces, uh, this, this technique is so diverse that uh, it has become more like a combinatorial technique. So uh, people generally uh, plug in, uh, you know, optical techniques, for example, uh, fluorescence microscope, uh, IR uh, spectroscopy, and uh, Raman spectroscopy. And uh, people uh, like to change the temperature from extreme low to extreme high while doing uh, scanning probe microscopy. So there are various things uh, scientists, they desire to understand the forces, especially chemis chemistry and biology students they are trying to understand a lot and lot about forces. So uh, obvious question comes that why do we care about measuring the forces? So forces are there. That's why the universe exists actually, as simple as that. Uh, if you understand uh, the forces, 
they are holding the universe together uh, planets together they form uh, they hold the gases together molecules and uh, atoms uh, you know the electrons are orbiting because of forces around the nucleus nucleus uh, exists because of the uh, you know short range forces uh, okay so there are if you go if you go to any length scale uh, there are forces between earth and moon earth and sun between different uh, suns of uh, different uh, solar system, different systems right there are different stars so i am sure that you have heard about gravitational waves so gravitational waves can travel uh, quite far which you can't even imagine they are very subtle but they can travel quite far so there is a movie i would highly recommend you to watch uh, interstellar so that movie is not just the fiction uh, it is basically a science based fiction it's not just the fiction uh, so it was uh, i think one of the top physicists physicists was consultant when this movie was uh, uh, written the script writing and so that movie nice thing about that movie is that it doesn't defy any laws of physics uh, so it uh, tells a lot about gravitational forces that how uh, thoughts and emotions between a father and daughter can cross a uh, warm hole and uh, you know they were able to communicate with each other one side of the warm hole daughter was there and another side of uh, warm hole father who was an astronaut so he was there so that movie is shot in a uh, some some time in future when we we would have already destroyed our uh, planet earth and so you know frequent crop failures will happen and uh, we will not have food to eat then uh, uh, that movie is basically shot in a very nice way so i i highly recommend if you want to understand uh, gravitational forces you must uh, 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 watch that uh, movie there are two ways of watching movies one is basically you we just you just shut down the brain and like go in the kind of a movie normally i do not uh, have time to watch uh, those kind of movies maybe once in a 10 years i watch that kind of movie but one uh, other way is basically you keep your brain op- open there is an emotions down and you try to learn from movies so i fall into the second category so i do a lot of researching before uh, tuning into a uh, movie and i share with the students also in the class that oh go go and see that movie so this interest is available on amazon prime so you can go and check so forces are uh, always with you uh, forces in fact uh, shape your body the way you are and they they also shape your thoughts and emotions actually you won't realize that so i'll i'll tell you uh, in a minute uh, so forces are there in the biological forces if you look at uh, there is a nice table uh, if you look at cellular contraction uh, basically uh, they uh, amount to the forces in micronewtons uh, rupture of covalent bond four nanonewtons uh, unfolding of water soluble soluble proteins protein unfolding is basically even uh, lower piconewtons so if you go much uh, uh, i mean there are many examples like uh, enzymatic activation even much uh, one order of audio, uh, magnitude lower in piconewton so sal- sal- so basically these are extreme uh, forces uh, which uh, which which uh, needs to be measured so this is current understanding uh, about uh, uh, life uh, from scientific tools uh, about forces that how forces different kind of forces they play uh, very important roles uh into uh reactions biological reactions or even catalytic reactions any any reaction any synthesis you do you cannot do without understanding the forces you have to you know electrostatic forces gravitational forces uh right they all uh, play a major major role in what you synthesize right you can you can see uh, you may not uh, have intellectual involvement with Uh, those things mm, that is the sad part but the fact is that when you do any synthesis uh, the the product which is formed 
uh, has even lattice formation is basically a play of uh, uh, forces, electrostatic forces, anything, you know, um, any battery, supercapacitor, or anything basically is governed by forces, uh, intermolecular interaction, ionic interaction, these are all forces, right? Formation of aggregates, formation of nanoparticles, settling of the nanoparticle, agglomeration of the particles. So that's why this Jacob is really, uh, which he, uh, that book is uh, all about. Uh, that tells basically like colloidal formation, uh, lipid, lipid bilayer formation, formation of cells, uh, any, anything in the chemistry, biochemistry. Uh, so if you read that book, uh, I will not be covering that book uh, in this lecture because it's too much. Uh, but uh, your, your understanding about uh, forces, like uh, in super capacitors, uh, super basically double layer formation, these are all, uh, I will be teaching uh, quite a lot. Chemistry is all about forces actually. So, Understand forces, you have understood many, many uh, things across the, across the discipline. Uh, so, this again, this uh, course, like previous module on electromagnetic will uh, encroach beyond uh, just ASM. So, this course is not just about uh, learning ASM. Uh, this, I would have asked any uh, other person from uh, industry or somebody. So, there, is a, there has to be different. The way I teach uh, so I will teach in a more holistic manner, so uh, it will benefit you in many ways actually. Because philosophically connecting you to the world around you, that is, that is my own effort, that how do you philosophically connect with the world around you. Uh, some examples are, some other examples of the forces, for example, gravitational attraction of a photon and electron, I don't think Hello? Yes. Hello? Sir, your voice is not clear. Oh, is it, uh, is it not audible or? Is it not proper, sir. It is audible, but not proper. And, uh, it's good that you told me. Uh, can you hear me better now? Yes, sir. Yes. Now it's better. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, thanks a lot, Kundan. Uh, you are able to uh, interrupt me. And uh, if there is a, such kind of a problem, so please uh, tell me. Uh, so I hope, Kundan, it is better now. Kundan, can you unmute? Yes, sir. It's better now. Is better or good? I mean, bet is the way it, it is normally or it is not good today? I mean, yeah, now it is normal, sir. Normal. Okay. It's normal the way it, it should be. Okay. So I go back to the uh, other uh, extreme forces, uh, which are calculated. We can't measure it. Actually, I would like to tell you that uh, below uh, uh, Pico Newton, uh, AFM uh, will find it very difficult to measure it. So these are basically calculated values. So weight of an electron in terms of uh, the force is 10 to the power minus 30. Uh, three zero Newton. It is quite feeble actually. Uh, weight of hydrogen atom. Okay. So uh, force necessary to synchronize the motion of single trapped ion with external signal measured in two thousand ten. So there were there are exceptional ways, uh, indirect ways you can measure uh, forces. So for example, weight of an E. coli bacterium is in uh, frame to Newton. So uh, force to break a hydrogen bond uh, is. Four pico newton. That is that sounds uh, uh, a bit of chemistry. So you might relate. So you should be able to relate actually. So uh, with some of these things. Uh, uh, again, uh, force to break a typical non-covalent bond is uh, uh, basically in pico newton. So idea is that uh, can you uh, mm, by using this force spectroscopy? We call it actually force spectroscopy. When you start uh, measuring. Uh, quantitatively uh, certain forces. So we call it uh, basically uh, force spectroscopy. So uh, advantage is that if you are able to calibrate the way you calibrate any uh, chemistry setup, uh, right? Uh, like, you know, 
you are doing some reactions and you are looking at the absorption uh, spectrospe spectroscopy or so you basically look at uh, certain dye degradation so you are able to calibrate certain things so here also you can uh, uh, once you calibrate uh, mm, forces so you are able to, can you uh, the question arises that can can i uh, for a chemistry student uh, the obvious uh, application would be that can i know uh, what kind of functional group is sitting can i do the functional group mappings for example i have a molecular layer deposited on a substrate uh, is it possible that i can uh, tell that uh, which kind of uh, chain is, is sitting this is whether it is alkylic chain or it's a, a basically benzene ring kind of a thing or there is a carboxylic uh, group or or any kind of like um, different kind of amino acids even larger like protein molecules larger and larger smaller to larger starting from cations and anions can i can i quantify actually so and also uh, can i can i quantify for example you want to look at the uh, interaction between uh, two ligands so uh, can i can i tell uh, that uh, what kind of interaction two molecules would have so uh, this is possible uh, in afm this is called chemical force uh, imaging or chemical force microscopy where you are able to indeed uh, do this kind of uh, interactions uh, for example we know that uh, gold has a quite strong binding with thiol but can you prove it actually what kind of interaction it is it, is it a covalent interaction or it just some kind of electrostatic interaction can you measure that uh, force so yes it is these are all possible uh, here actually so this uh, the applications are mind blowing actually you can you can uh, keep on thinking about uh, many of these things so uh, you might have read all these uh, some of these uh, values so i will go to the uh, so what are the fundamental forces the, so i'm uh, i'm going um, from uh, modern to um, you know the ancient time and then i'll slowly take you to the modern time so our uh, modern understanding about funda fundamental forces uh, is basically uh, four kind of we can club them in four like strong and weak interactions uh, and electromagnetic and gravitational interactions so uh, electromagnetic and gravitational interactions they are quite connected to uh, our human perception we can say that these are electromagnetic forces uh, from day to day experiences we know uh, about the gravitational interactions we can say that okay apple is falling from the tree so that is because of the gravitational interaction and but strong and weak interactions uh, it is beyond the it's uh, human perception so that is basically a gift of physics that physicists were able to uh, tell you but i won't say the same thing about uh, these two things these two things are not the gift of the physics they the history of the the origin of these uh, these uh, these forces is as old as human developed the prefrontal cortex right the human brain so it is as old as old as uh, that uh, so let us let me go uh, ahead uh, so i will not go uh, much about much uh, into the uh, strong and weak interactions uh, but it happens basically between all these uh, subatomic particles and these are uh, quite uh, basically let's let me pick up a call hello hello i'll i'll call you back i'm teaching actually i'll i'll call you i'm in office only but i'm teaching actually yeah 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 so uh, so so we will uh, skip this part and we'll come directly to what we connect and uh, as i said that the history of strong and weak interactions is uh, basically very recent we didn't have understanding about what is inside the nucleus and uh, if i tell you that oh our ancestors knew uh, what is inside the nucleus that is all you know i would say that uh, bullshit actually it's not true we should we have we should have balance when some people claim that oh our ancestors knew everything and you know they go overboard so <clears throat> we have to find a balance what our ancestors knew and what uh, and some people there are extremes oh you, there was no knowledge actually and the knowledge is just given by modern science that is also not true so i'll tell you a balance uh, story uh, 
uh, as a physicist, I'll tell you uh, quite a balanced story. E even actually, maybe next year I will be able to tell you much better because I'm reading some some other important books uh, which are which recently physicists have started. Uh, this is basically job of physicists, basically that we should be able to understand. Now we have a modern knowledge, so uh, now we can go back and check whether our ancestors have some. Uh, better knowledge, I mean, similar knowledge, they reach to similar conclusion and not to have emotional uh, um, attachments. So once we start having emotional attachments to some theories, then we can't think in a rational way. We should have a th little bit uh, logical and rational thinking, not to have emotional, uh, not from the emotional point of view. So, uh, so basically, if you look at the uh, 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 liquids, actually the solute and solvent uh, uh, molecules, they, they all undergo a lot of different kinds of, we will go much deeper into uh, colloidal suspension. And uh, the gravitational forces, they affect all the, all lot of things basically, uh, you know, falling different objects, tides, your height actually is governed by, uh, okay, how, how tall you are. And uh, if you uh, look at much deeper and deeper, uh, you will realize that, uh, uh, these electromagnetic forces and gravitational forces, they are all around us. They, con they control your chemical reactions. All your chemical reactions are uh, controlled by these two forces. I will not uh, comment about uh, other two forces. They don't control your chemical reactions, but yes, nuclear reactions, they control the other two forces which we have skipped, okay? So, uh, so here behavior of particles in the solution, it's, we'll be discussing a lot, properties of solid, liquid, gases, Organization of biological structure, you know, why certain species are smaller uh, and some of them grew uh, much larger in size. So, uh, for example, if you look at the certain species on the ocean floor, they are much, uh, pressure is very high and then, um, uh, you know, they are different shape objects. So those are, and our, if you look at the shape of our blood cells, uh, red blood cells, white blood cells, so there is a lot to learn. There are a lot of mysteries which, uh, which scientists are still learning from nature. Uh, but now a question comes that how old uh, the history of this uh, uh, for modern uh, understanding of forces is. So then we have to it, uh, ev uh, you know, evoke the evolution of religion. So I understand the religions, all religions in the world uh, as a, from the evolution theory. So, uh, I mean, uh, initially there was no religion and uh, there was no need to really uh, have any religious, uh, you know, uh, dogmas. And, but uh, these laws of nature when our ancestors, some of, uh, uh, some of these laws, uh, some of the phenomena they could not understand, they, some, of the, some of the phenomena they could understand. So some of these things, uh, basically, they could not understand, obviously, the forces, uh, you know, the eruption of volcanoes or some objects falling from the sky, earth splitting suddenly, some viral outbreak, some diseases happening. So they started attributing everything to some mystery, mystical powers, mystical forces, somebody's uh, iron boots sticking to uh, you know, some uh, strange ob object. So that was all considered as you know, the powers of Jesus or uh, uh, Isher or Allah or something. You know, even today, we, uh, even I'm sorry to tell you that Many people in science also they small small thing rather than you know, they country they attribute to uh, we don't need to do that because we are, we have better understanding today so we don't need to really trouble gods uh, to uh, understand what we can do with science obviously you can uh, put uh, rest of the things which science cannot understand on God until science can understand you can still put it on the God's head but God doesn't need to be troubled, troubled actually for smaller and smaller things. So that's where this very interesting uh, thing come actually that how the Greek and medieval notion of intermolecular forces happened that uh, Greeks basically started, uh, if, as I told you that many, you know, these, uh, many people even start relating all kinds of diseases to all to this God actually, the God is causing all the diseases, God, God is doing that. It's not true actually, we know that it's not true. It was, it was a notion probably thousands and thousands of years back, but now we need to change this actually. Otherwise science will not move. We have to have, uh, earlier people used to, uh, in US still people believe on flat earth. That was, uh, that was older concept. Uh, earth is flat, 
below my feet where i walk actually but earth is not overall flat so we have to uh, go uh, forward uh, you know when it, as a scientist actually so we have to start thinking in a non religious way so i i basically think that religion also evolved with time all the religions evolved with time they started uh, rejecting uh, older ideas which were not fitting and uh, that was a natural evolution the best religion i would say religion is still required i would say that uh, it's the smartest way of uh, managing uh, people the religion but religion has to evolve actually with, as a function of time if the religion doesn't evolve then religion always evolved actually religion always evolved with time it accommodated new theories it rejected old ideas and that has to be done in a very uh, systematic way the way we evolved actually okay the body evolved the planet evolved the cosmos universe evolved uh, so it has to it has to be there it has to accommodate uh, new ideas uh, and that is also stupid thing that uh, people uh, completely reject Uh, i tell you somewhere balance is required you can't reject the older things actually so i will tell you something interesting so you will really love it actually uh, the both people if you are religious then also you will like it and if you are not religious then also you will like it so uh, basically greeks were first to consider the forces in a non religious way they found that uh, there are only two forces and it is true if you i mean they i mean human observation simplified the force is into two classes and indeed it is true either there is a repulsive force or there is an attractive force right and uh, it's like you know we say that oh a body is made of panch bhuta you know the five elements the uh, indian philosophy said and also greek philosophy it's not just indian philosophy mentioned about panch bhuta if you go to the greek philosophy they also said the same thing similar thing actually so uh, and that made the uh, things uh, very simple i mean it's not true but it's it's basically serves our day to day purpose it, we don't need to really go to the elemental analysis we don't need to do that for understanding uh, day to day things unless we are required then we can go to the periodic table so similarly love and hate we don't need to measure uh, the forces we know that certain things attract certain things uh, do not attract so that was basically love and hate uh, basically two objects love each other uh so they basically two pieces of stone they love so they are, they basically attract each other and but people didn't realize that okay this is this is happening that but there is any uh, uh action uh, at a distance so there is any intermediate particle which is exchanging so what is basically how these two pieces of stones are talking to each other you know how they are exchanging how do they how do they know uh, for example magnetite and iron the how do they know each other's presence i mean science it took lot of time to understand even even forget about uh, electromagnetic forces gravitational uh, uh, forces uh, remains mystery uh, till uh, just a few decades back you know that's why you know that gravitational wave was such a big deal how the uh, planets they they know understand each other's uh, presence stars so far away so far away okay you can i mean cations and ions they can understand they can uh, basically through electric forces they, they know each other's presence fine uh, one bacterium and another bacterium they can communicate with, with each other through exchange of uh, these these basically sudden, sudden uh, molecules and these molecules they jump uh, from here to there basically uh, based on uh, forces electrostatic forces right so uh, so basically uh, if i go to the next uh, slide so uh, existence existence so they, they were basically there was a mystery so many civilization they uh, still remain in the religious way they said it is because of jesus or allah or ishwar or something some some people went bit ahead of the religion and they said no no it's not because of this uh, god god doesn't need to come in between we can understand it so action at a distance property was still a mystery that okay we can understand that uh, this sometimes this happens and sometimes it doesn't happen so but but still magnets were uh, people used to think that magnetic forces could cure diseases it may be true we don't need to reject this idea completely i'm just telling you as a good scientist is basically not to reject completely but uh, to uh, explore uh, modern uh, with modern science whether it is still possible so probably it is possible that magnetic forces may be able to influence uh, certain uh, biochemical reactions in the body if they are very strong we know that gravitational 
uh, effects are there on the body you know the menstruation cycle of uh, women they, it is connected to the uh, gravitational uh, forces right that's why it is uh, there is certain days uh, uh, in a, in in homo sapiens okay so uh, also we we understand that these tidal waves uh, i'll i'll come to that later on uh, very interesting uh, science so some of these things we can debunk actually that uh, these magnetic forces can cause melancholy thievery and all kinds of things magnets can find gold people uh, try to find magnetism in gold you will be surprised to know so this is not an entirely uh, untrue even i tried to i did a lot of experiments with the very finest finest magnetometer available uh, but there are some japanese group they say that gold nano particles may uh, have uh, some magnetism so but there is still controversy so i would say i say that we have to uh, keep our uh, eyes and ears open not to shut down things okay oh it is all stupid we sh- that is also bad actually okay so we have to find a reason why they say it the way they they say it our ancestors there may be some reason actually uh, okay so uh, and uh, 3000 years back a shepherd basically went his sheep onto a hill somewhere in uh, uh, modern turkey uh that time it was not turkey at all the name itself was completely different that was a greek civilization right and uh, he used to go on the hill same hill all the time and there was a bad thunderstorm and then he went with his uh, uh, boots which had la- obviously leather boots and uh, leather wear soft quite uh, early so they used to put some iron pieces uh, somewhere here and there uh, in the soul so that uh, boots will last longer and he got scared uh, he thought it's some divine intervention some some god something you know that's why his boots are sticking to the uh, hill and he is not able to walk so uh, the, when he reported this incidents to some wise people in the village and uh, one of the wise pe- person in the greek uh, uh, that village uh, it was basically now this this uh, mount is called mount ida now it is in modern day turkey so that uh, that basically uh, we had uh, uh, wise people like rishis here in in indian civilization uh, there they had uh, people like pythagoras and tells basically he uh, he was a contemporary of buddha buddha was also around uh, uh, 500 bc so uh, that was a time when a lot of intellectual things uh, already started in different civilization so then he reported that and then uh, this uh, thales of Mil- miletus basically uh, he started giving it a theory that uh, and uh, he was a contemporary of pythagoras pythagoras said that thales is thales is created uh, credited with having laid the foundation of not just philosophy but uh, physics and mathematics so that was a greek uh, you know uh, and i like some of these quotes by uh, philosophical quotes by thales basically the most difficult thing in the life is to know yourself second quote is nothing is so today we are not discussing hardcore science so that will happen from next time so today we are just just some having some general discussion so you can unmute yourself and say your views also nothing is more active than thought for it travels over the universe and nothing is stronger then necess- and you will find this uh, tra- thought traveling over the universe in that movie interstellar actually uh, where the daughter is able to convey the emotions uh, to the father through the warm hole so i mean we have to be very careful actually to uh, when in, uh, some ideas uh, come to us we should not i put certain ideas which i don't understand uh, i don't throw them away i put somewhere in the gray area uh, to be taken and examined later on uh, i don't i don't i my dustbin is uh, always uh, empty i don't throw things in the dustbin unless really it is really necessary so uh, so then uh, aristotle was also uh, you know he contributed qu- quite a lot and uh, 5 century bc uh, atomistic view surprisingly started and i will tell you in india also atomistic theory uh, started quite early even maybe earlier than that and there was probably some exchange of ideas in two civilizations and uh, so basically they uh, uh, thought that uh, a magnet 
or magnetite Fe3O4 is feed, feeding on iron atoms. That's what uh, they thought. That, that's why there is, there is an attraction or repulsion. That means that some iron uh, atoms are coming from a piece of uh, iron and they are being fed because they might have, uh, uh, you might have done this experiment uh, as a kid. Uh, you might have taken um, a bar magnet and uh, try to attract the iron files or nails. You might have seen that these nails, tiny pieces of iron starts uh, flying towards the uh, magnet. So uh, they thought that iron is feeding on. Uh, it's like, you know, I take the food from the plate and I put it on my, my mouth. So they thought that it is feeding. That's why it, it needs basically. So that was, you can see that it is so interesting actually. And also another school thought that magnet emitted particles actually, and that's why these particles cleared the space. So these are, there are a lot of uh, interesting uh, uh, theories basically. Uh, uh, that also, uh, that was a birth of uh, technology also. Uh, it was not true that they were just doing philosophical discussion and not uh, uh, applying this to some application. So, uh, birth of uh, uh, this, uh, basically uh, compass is uh, ancient uh, geopositioning positioning system uh, through that the uh, you know the sailors were able to sail through the continents okay they they were able to travel they were able to do the town planning actually so chinese are credited with uh, uh, you know basically uh, constructing uh, what we call magnetic compass and then they were able to uh, relate uh, magnetic north uh, pole, magnetic south pole. Once you have this direction, sense of direction, actually sense of direction came from uh, magnetic, magnetic, uh, magnetic field, not from, uh, not easily from uh, solar system because sun, uh, when you, we say, okay, uh, sun uh, rises from uh, east and whatever, uh, you know, and then uh, sides in the west, but you know that uh, the direction keeps on changing within, within the east and within, you know. So that is all changing all the time. But uh, you know that. But uh, it is very uh, difficult to change the magnetic. Uh, I mean, it doesn't happen in, in a lifetime that uh, once lifetime. It, it, it happens in thousands and thousands of years that magnetic pole starts shifting from its direction. So, uh, but it, it happens uh, every day, almost every day you find uh, sun and moon shifted from uh, their direction, right? That's how the weather change happens. So this was more credible uh, uh, source of uh, uh, town planning. So if you, even if you, uh, this is a bit uh, written in a bit, a bit uh, Western bias, basically, but uh, Chinese, the Chinese people have contributed uh, in that book also, probably. But if you look at India, actually, Harappa and Mohan Chodra civilization, ex time town planning is excellent, excellent. The, uh, you know, the streets, alleys, and got, uh, houses, they are two floor houses, the, uh, the you know, water system, uh, everything is so, uh, it's like, you know, city of Chandigarh, basically, that it's all. Uh, north to south, uh, you know, modern city, if you can see that Jaipur, if you have been to Jaipur, it's, it's a modern city, relatively, but you can see the town planning without any modern tool. So it's such a, uh, if you might have seen the roads of Jaipur, actually, they just travel in one direction. They are not like zigzag, zigzag. So, so that was somewhere uh, application of uh, uh, magnetic field, magnetic interaction. Uh, so there is a, but people started uh, making fun, uh, especially religious people that, uh, okay, I mean, I'll not go into that. So again, uh, Eros is basically God of love, which is uh, the Roman counterpart of, uh, uh, Cupid is actually Roman counterpart. Eros is basically Greek God of love and desire. So that was also uh, related, to, related to the uh, attraction or uh, repulsion between uh, two objects, uh, uh, you know, that was a mythical uh, uh, or masculine, fem fem uh, feminine actually, all soul or divine and the application that was basically also an application actually. Uh, another, uh, I will come to the gravitational forces, uh, human behavior, uh, you know, the term is that lunatic, if I behave uh, in an irrational manner on a 
on a um, a full moon night or basically so people they observe that sometimes people who are not very strong in their mind they behave in a very crazy manner even animals also dogs start barking and sometimes uh, they will go crazy uh, some people so so they, there was a term like lunatic lunatic comes from uh, luna luna is basically moon in latin so lunatic you know the people who are crazy uh, and there is another term moon struck right moon struck basically why moon will strike someone that is all gravitational effect of gravitation on uh, our mind so our thoughts and emotions also undergo a lot of changes so that's why you can say that in indian philosophy uh, it's highly recommended people undergo uh, on full moon nights uh, uh, or basically no no uh, no moon basically there is a, a certain days they say that you have to in every religion i would say that there is a uh, concept of uh, going into deep prayers so going in, remaining indoor so you don't go on streets breaking somebody's head or something like that okay you so that was a religion was used to control the masses so they don't go lunatic and uh, they say okay quiet and you you know say some prayer do this do this do this do some meditation do do some chant some uh, some names of uh, jesus uh, allah or ishwar or whatever so that was basically religious way of uh, uh, controlling the psychology of the people uh, gravitational force uh, effect of ne- on neuroscience on the i'll i'll shift uh, 400 500 100 years uh, you know ahead and then indians started indian civilization started after this uh, compass system by chinese there were a lot of travels happened you know people started traveling longer distances because sense of direction came and then uh, there is a lot of uh, evidences so this is 13th century uh, you know be probably earlier than that but uh, nobody knows at least there is a confirm uh, this uh, date that 13th centuries at least but it can be earlier than that so there is this is basically konark temple so konark temple was like this so there is there is basically there was uh, 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 basically sun idol sun basically it's a it's a wonderful example of uh, physics i have been to many times to this temple so i look at the sun dials and i mean amazing you know the i mean how they could built it it's mind blow, mind boggling actually modern engineers cannot make something like this so much of science is there so much of science is there and so much of emotions and uh, so everything is there all the colors and all the uh, every part of life uh, there's no taboo here you can find uh you know that there is nothing which is uh, taboo actually uh, here that uh, okay uh, so so there was a piece of uh, uh iron uh, uh sun sun side uh, uh, you know suspend so basically this was one of the first example of uh, magnetic levitation now you know that you are talking about maglev train bullet train or all those things superconductivity so where you can float the entire train on magnetic field so this was one of the first uh, uh, of course compass is also a floated uh, uh, basically device which which floats actually that's how it is able to uh, sense the earth's magnetic field but here basically a large object so there was a magnet here and a magnet in the floor and there was there's another example is in somnath temple probably there are many other temples but these are the two examples somnath temple somewhere in saurashtra i have not been there but i have been here so uh, so basically so this part is basically gone so we we don't have this you can see that this is this is missing only this part is remaining so uh, it seems that uh, you know from is from wikipedia so you know so this jahangir's army uh, you know didn't like that and they in 17th century they they basically uh, destroyed that and then britishers fill fill uh, some sand into that actually now it is all filled with sand so that remaining structure doesn't fall so nobody knows basically what happens to the uh, the entire magnet but i would have been interested in studying the uh, mineralogy of those load stones actually so uh, electric forces also the same same way they were also a uh, lot of uh, mysticism lot of religious uh, angle uh, to the what can be a simple science uh okay so uh i would like to add uh, something completely non religious so completely non religious so in hindu uh, philosophy in uh, there are six schools i i hope all of you know 
uh, okay, uh, yoga and uh, Sankhya philosophy. Uh, Sankhya philosophy is completely atheist, uh, Prabhu, and uh, yoga philosophy allows, uh, uh, you know, out of six philosophy, five philosophies are completely atheist. They don't believe in God at all. Uh, no, four actually. So this uh, uh, Kanada Rishi was completely atheist actually. He was the founder, he's considered as a founding father of uh, modern physics. Uh, but we physicists, they believe, believe now when we have started looking at, problem was that uh, initially the Sanskrit scholars who didn't understand physics, they, uh, they had access to those things. Now, now people are, uh, they, he, so he started finding his own school actually. So it's completely uh, non-religious, no, 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 nothing to do with the, uh, um, you know, uh, theism. He was uh, not, uh, the he didn't believe in theology. So basically he explained the creation and existence of universe uh, by proposing atomistic theory, applying logic and realism uh, is one of the earliest known systematic uh, realistic ontology on, in the human history. And he was basically much earlier, much, 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 much earlier. Canada suggested, Canada actually is basically name itself is basically atomic, atom actually suggested that everything can be uh, subdivided. He said that everything can be subdivided, but the subdivision cannot go on forever, forever. And there has to be a smallest entities and he named it as Parmanu, uh, basically atoms that cannot, I mean, obviously we have to, we know that, as I said, that uh, ancient, ancient these rishis could not really believe that there is something electron, proton, neutron, uh, but uh, up till Parmanu, their, their, their observation was quite, quite correct actually. And uh, they had the time scales of, to handle those things. They could go to the nanoseconds and uh, they could really add uh, length scales to uh, look at those things. So, uh, so basically, and also if we view from the prism of physics, his ideas imply a clear role for an observer as independent of the system being studied. So Canada's ideas were influential on other school of Hinduism and over the history became closely. So it is called basically Nyaya school, Nyaya and uh, Vaisheshika. They are actually uh, reject the idea of uh, God. Uh, and that was a probably reason that uh, uh, in Hinduism, uh, these two philosophies were not uh, promoted earlier because uh, uh, see, uh, if I say that God doesn't exist, so uh, I will not be uh, promoted. So uh, only two or three theories uh, uh, basically, I mean, it doesn't solve the purpose. I mean, I would like to have an idea of gods because to transfer all my problems onto the God, they do the problem. The virus agya, so there must be some God must have done something. So I didn't want to take my own responsibility. So that, that idea is sounds very good. So that's why these theories you don't really hear in the uh, modern, uh, you know, uh, theology. They were suppressed actually, these ideas were, but they, they, it's not like they were uh, pushed uh, from, uh, they were basically, their head were, was chopped or something that didn't happen at least in India. No, everybody was allowed to, uh, you know, there was no um, uh, basically, Everybody was allowed to uh, prosper the ideas. Nobody was basically pushed uh, from the minar or something and uh, sanctioned to the murder or something like that, or blasphemy concept didn't exist in India. See, that's why these six schools could prosper. You can say there is six schools because there was no idea, there is no concept of blasphemy in Indian philosophy. You know, there is nothing called blasphemy. If you believe God and the other party doesn't believe, so they are not going to kill each other actually. There is no blasphemy that uh, they will be punished or you're, okay. Uh, so these are uh, again, uh, people who uh, laid the foundation of uh, uh, gravitational uh, um, uh, force, uh, Archimedes and Galileo Newton. And there's a lot of uh, research on Kanadas actually. Many people, uh, I, will, I will not uh, tell you now because I didn't have time to show you. Kanadas text actually uh, basically tells uh, many equations uh, which were, uh, I mean, Kanada was, pre I mean, which Newton, uh, Newton's laws of motion. So there are clear equations actually. Uh, there is, uh, there are some Western uh, philosophers, uh, physicists in the US, they are, they published a lot of books. So then uh, I'll uh, now uh, go, come to the modern science. So then came the time of Newton, Boyle and Hooke's birth of alchemy started, birth of chemistry, you know, all uh, the, basically the precursor of the chemistry started, which is alchemy. Physics came much earlier. 
then chemistry and then chemistry followed and then biology followed so uh, then uh, people started people were still confused actually that uh, uh, archimedes uh, he he gave his uh, idea of uh, gravity and all kinds of things so i'll i'll fast forward and come to the 17th century and uh, that was a birth of alchemy like what we call it chemistry astrology we call it like uh, astrophysics uh, now and uh, that was a first proper scientific period actually i would say that so uh, uh, okay i'll i'll uh, go to more interesting things actually uh, okay uh, yeah but there was a lot of trouble actually there was a lot of trouble interesting trouble and you will be you know you will be the people's ego clash started actually between newton and uh, uh, boyle so that was a trouble of uh, you know everybody loves a little bit of politics actually right padas mein jhagda ho raha hai to sab log wahan maza lete hai na to hum chalo thoda jhagde ka bhi discuss kar lete hai na thoda we will be have we will have some fun when scientists they fight so they are fighting in a different way right they should fight in a different way so <laughs> so this was basically so this was a fight of several 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 decades and even if even when they died uh, the so basically newton uh, said that objects uh, at a finer level also attract with each other that was newton's discovery right the uh, everything attracts there was no idea there was no quantum mechanics that time there was no uh, wonder was uh, phd thesis at that time and here came boyle actually the gas law he said that no the molecules uh, repel each other so they really had a bitter 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 fight uh, that boyle said that no forces are uh, repulsing repulsive in nature, nature and uh, boyle said that uh, uh, so so you know that pv is equal to constant and newtons and uh, all kinds of things so there was a lot of lot of uh, heated fight actually so a lot of contradictions were there and that that basically continued even after their death actually because un, unke jo chele the to guru ji ke wo bhi keh rahe the nahi mera guru acha tha mera guru sahi bol raha tha so that continued for 200 years nothing nothing really happened in the modern science you will be surprised that nothing really happened in the in the modern science newton did al did use newton used to believe in alchemy you will be surprised to know newton was a uh, newton is a celebrated physicist but he believed in the he used to do a lot of when he, when it came to chemistry he used to do a lot of alchemy so he used to believe in communication with the angels and uh, you know a lot of interesting things he did actually <laughs> which you will laugh actually i will not uh, discuss that okay so that is the book uh, which isaac newton wrote uh, right you know that uh, philosophy naturalist mystica yeah? uh, mathematica uh, so uh, same thing you know these are all british scientists you know the, he boyle was also from university of uh, oxford so 18th century confusion contradiction and controversy uh, started and then chemistry uh, started forming uh, from this uh, uh, notion of forces and uh, and there were uh, some other controversy that uh, derivation of inverse distance law for the behavior of gases uh, even newton uh, newton said these are all this is this is not physics actually this is nothing and another problem that okay newton said that okay apple fall because of gravity but why does it fall towards earth what is the action at the distance is there any intervening substance they said oh it's all superational forces this is there is something which is we don't understand action at a distance why what is what is how do earth uh, how do uh, apple know presence of the earth that is basically a philosophical question we didn't know the gravitational waves okay so it sounds very uh, uh, intuitive or something we can uh, be because we grew up on we we are born on the earth so we don't really take it seriously but if alien comes and then uh, we'll have fun actually our uh, human uh, so then people started thinking probably the forces are oscillatory sometimes they become repulsive and sometimes they become attractive then they become uh, attractive again then they become repulsive again if you look at it, it's very funny because uh, if you if you see that uh, forces at uh, much much uh, 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 Final level, they are repulsive. Pauli's exclusion principle, you know that, right? And then they are uh, attractive. Okay, uh, you know that one over six term in the uh, uh, Van der Waals interaction. 
uh, water force attraction. There is a repulsive term. And then they can be uh, repulsive again, you know, the gas law. And then they can be attractive each other because sun and moon and they are all held together actually. Okay, so is it oscillatory? And another uh, problem was uh, that uh, whether molecules exist or they don't exist, whether matter is made of atoms or molecule or it's made of continuum, you know, it's a continuum object, continuum theory or molecular theory. So that was another very big uh, controversy and there were two schools of thought and uh, they, somebody said, oh, matter is made of, uh, uh, matter is, you can, it's, it's basically continuous uh, uh, thing. It's not made of uh, particles. Uh, but Newton, you know, that he gave the theory of uh, basically uh, corpuscles, right? Uh, so he, so they had uh, basically light particles, right? Um, Newton had believed that matter was made of particle. And uh, Young's, Young said, okay, no, light can be, um, can behave like wave. So then uh, finally in uh, 19th century, uh, continuum people who used to believe uh, continuum field theories, they uh, won the debate, the Shastrath, we call it Indian philosophy. And uh, it was basically considered a death of molecules. People start, stopped believing uh, in the theory of uh, molecules, actually. A chemistry students, it may be uh, really uh, amusing to know that. So it is said that uh, it's not that uh, there was a, uh, Maxwell said actually, the physicist Maxwell said that main, re main reason that uh, mid 19th century, no one uh, believed in the molecule that uh, matter is made of molecule is that it was not because anybody showed that they didn't exist, molecule don't exist. Nobody proved that. But people who used to work in that area, they all died actually or retired actually. That's why they, there was nobody to uh, proper jhanda lekar ke chalne wala unka koi bacha nahi tha. Then uh, later half of the 19th century saw the return of the molecule, like right? you know, uh, mummy returns, you know, you know that movie, okay. So later half, half of the uh, uh, 19th century, the more understanding and uh, new kinetic theory uh, came into the picture, Van der Waals contribution came. And then, uh, which required attracting molecule to explain. Uh, please note that, uh, uh, you know, atomistic theory, even though it was given by uh, Rishi Kanad, was not uh, uh, accepted by, because it was not accessible to Europeans, otherwise European would have stolen that also. So then came birth of statistical mechanics and unification of continuum theory and uh, such as thermodynamics, you know, if Mima is there in this lecture, mean field theory, uh, okay, molecular theory, they all uh, were unified by statistical mechanics. Statistical mechanics uh, was able to uh, unify a lot of things actually, uh, you know, we, we, we look at the statistical uh, mechanics in deeper uh, realm. So, so basically, if you can see the 19th century, these three, uh, four, four contributions happened in 19th century, Clausius, Maxwell's, Van der Waals we'll discuss, and Boltzmann also, Boltzmann statistics, you know, Right, Maxwell Boltzmann statistics, and uh, less known thing uh, which is not required for you is basically Fermi Dirac statistics. Right, Maxwell Boltzmann is much more so. Statistics was uh, statistical mechanics uh, was quite unifying. Uh, okay, uh, but the origin of forces still remain a puzzle until 20th century. Actually, we we still do not know what is the current uh, scenario. We still do not know many things actually many new forces. In fact, uh, we say that uh, um, acoustic waves cannot travel uh, in vacuum, right? A sound cannot travel, but uh, in vacuum, they, it can travel to certain distance. There is a tunneling actually, the way tunneling happens actually. So this is the uh, map of uh, contribution by different scientists. So X axis is basically, uh, different uh, the centuries, 15th century, 16th century, and this is the name of uh, different people who contributed, Coulomb, Laplace, Young, Clausius, Maxwell, Van der Waals, Gibbs, Boltzmann, Langmuir, Devay, you all know all these. We will discuss about contribution of Leonard Jones and London, Pauling, Onsaker, Hemacher. We will actually go uh, in the next lecture, we will be discussing all these contributions. Uh, Degenes, uh, uh, Lipschitz, uh, Landau, Lipschitz, is, I mean, we'll, all these names uh, and electrochemistry, we'll be discussing about electrochemistry, colloidal uh, chemistry, 
and uh, uh, Leonard Jones, basically the foundation founder of the physical chemistry. Okay, London Dubai, we will uh, understand Langmuir's contribution. We'll understand they are all uh, famous people actually. Boltzmann, Gibbs. Okay, so it's it started actually somewhere here. Actually, if you see that we can forget all these. Coulomb, obviously, we will not we will not discuss about um, you know we we'll start from kinetic theory and thermodynamics and then we'll come to the quantum theory and uh, colloidal chemistry okay if you see that this is this is what we do these days we look at either colloids most of the drugs are colloidal in, in nature these days most of them and uh, so this will be uh, fun to uh, look into uh, certain ideas so uh, so i would say that uh, despite of centuries of contribution from giants the mystery of forces is not yet understood completely and you will be uh, surprised today that how religion and science they are uh, basically they had to fight with each other to uh, move ahead uh, you know scientists used to live in fear from religious people you know that in europe basically that uh, galileo was under fear newton was under fear they find they found smarter ways to uh, propagate their theories otherwise they, there was a uh, threat on their life that uh, so uh, so my lecture uh, could not have uh, uh, gone uh, nice in that direction without discussing religion because uh, science is somewhere uh, and uh, 